in this section we are going to discuss about DSCP snooping. So basically DSCP snooping is a security feature that act like a firewall between untrusted hosts and trusted DSCP servers. For example, if we have a topology which is look like this, we have a DSCP centralized server running on Windows or Linux box, DSCP relay agents and couples of client. Hopefully you know how DSCP work. So basically what happened when we turn on this client machine, client machine going to send a broadcast message which is known as DSCP discover message. So using layer 2 and layer 3 broadcast message going to send to the switch and switch going to send out of every port except to that receive this is how your switch work and now this is the DSCP relay agent responsibility to make it the unicast message and send over to the DSCP server and DSCP server going to offer you which is also known as a DSCP offer messages again client uh, again client going to create a message which is known as the request so client going to request to the server since you are the DSCP let me know the correct TCP IP setting like IP address default gateway subnet mask and DNS server so client going to request and server going to uh, send a TCP IP setting along with the acknowledgement so this is how your DSCP server work or how your DSCP process going to take place. But as long as it working there is no problem. If inside LAN there is an attacker who is already running a DSCP settings or DSCP instance, attacker can offer you the wrong information. So whatever, uh, whatever message is sent by the client in order to discover who is a DSCP server, attacker can announce that I am the DSCP server, you can get TCP IP settings from me. Because your DSCP relay agent may take little bit time in order to send data to the DSCP server. Since your attacker is directly connected to the same broadcast domain, it going to offer uh, earlier than your DSCP server. So your attacker can offer you the wrong gateway address, let's say uh, whatever the IP address of the attacker that can offer the gateway address as well as the wrong prefer and alternate DNS address. So what happen if it offer you incorrect gateway and incorrect DNS address. So whenever you trying to send data to out of network, you going to send traffic to the attacker's interface or attacker device. Attacker can sniff the data or you, in other word you can say it, ca, uh, it is denial of services attack. So you may not able to access internet or uh, attacker can also send data to the internet but it can sniff the traffic whatever you sending. And maybe if you want to go for a internet banking, let's say for particular uh, particular bank, for example, ICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICICIC
and it can only reply the offer message. So, discover generated by the client. So, whatever client or how many clients are connected inside LAN, they are going to generate a discover message. An offer message only respond by this interface, not other interface because other interface is untrusted interface. This is, these interface are not trusted interface. So, that makes sense as well as uh, let discuss we can also go for rate limit for DSCP traffic from trusted and untrusted source. What is mean by this? Let us say if attacker may not running a DSCP instance, but he can go for denial of services attack. For example, in DSCP server we have a 10 IP address an attacker going to send message over and over and over and over to get all IP addresses. So, it is going to create a fake MAC address and sending a DSCP request in order to get that IP address. So, IP address 1, 2, 3, 4 and dot 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 10. All IP address going to obtain by this attacker. So, what happen about rest of devices? they may not able to get the correct TCP IP setting. So, because of that they cannot communicate or they cannot access the network resources. We can also prevent such kind of things using DSCP snooping. So, we can rate limit on particular interface. You can only send one time DSCP offer excuse me DSCP discover message or two time or three time it is up to us. So, what happen if you exceed the limit? Your interface going to be uh, sent to the error disabled and let discuss little bit more. If untrusted port exceed the limit interface sent to the error disabled. In your DSCP snoofing device in this case this is the switch going to maintain a DSCP snooping binding database where the where is your IP address and MAC address along with the lease information going to maintain by the DSCP snooping device which can later use for some other purpose like a dynamic ARP inspection and utilize DSCP snooping binding database to validate up sub, uh, subsequent request from the untrusted host like how many time you created offer message or DSCP excuse me DSCP discover message. Uh, DSCP snooping can be enable on disable on per VLAN basis. So, for VLAN 1 you can enable DSCP snooping for VLAN 2 if you know, if you do not want to use the DSCP snooping for VLAN 2 you can disable it. By default the feature is inactive or in other word you can say disabled. So, rest of thing going to uh, discuss on CLI devices up and working. So, let us play with it. IP DSCP snooping we going to configure on this switch and this is the router which going to work as a DSCP server and rest of devices going to work as a DSCP client. So, go ahead and configure first DSCP router. So, I am going to assign IP address on gig interface as we can see no shutdown and then after IP DSCP pool and the name of pool is let us say test and define the network. In my case I am going to use 1.0.0.0. So, it could be windows uh, windows box or Linux box running DSCP on it. In my case I am going to use a Cisco router. The next thing which I am uh, which I am going to do debug IP DSCP server events as well as server packets so that we can verify this. Finally, we need to configure our switch. So, IP DSCP snooping uh, enable and then after IP DSC, uh, DSCP snooping enable for VLAN number one. One more thing I would like to configure 
first I would like to turn off this interface and shortly we are going to see why, uh, why I am going to turn off this interface. So let me so do so CDP neighbor let me verify so we are connected with F0 slash 24 going to the DSCP and switch one is connected to the fast ethernet F0 slash 1 so interface F0 slash 1 let me shut it down and then after uh, configure this router to get TCP IP setting from the DSCP server so on this router which is branch router interface gig 0 slash 0 please no shut down and get IP TCP IP setting from the DSCP server likewise on this router interface gig 0 slash 0 IP address from the DSCP and make sure interface is up so once we configure this thing no one device going to get TCP IP setting because there is a there is two problem the first one is no one port is a trusted port by default so we need to configure this interface as a trusted interface this interface can reply for DSCP so suppose if client requesting to get TCP IP this is the right port or this is the appropriate where our DSCP server is located so go to that interface interface F0 slash 24 and IP DSCP snooping this is trusted port so this is the command which we required in order to make particular interface as a trusted port but once we create a, trust, a trusted port we getting another uh, error error is a gateway address is zero so by default this device going to insert a option which is option number 82 so it going to insert gateway in some other information so it going to work as a DSCP relay agent by default but we can disable this feature using command configure terminal IP DSCP we need to execute it globally no IP DSCP snooping information option so we are not going to insert that option for DSCP snooping so now we can see device going to get TCP IP setting from the DSCP server it may take little bit time so do so IP interface brief excuse me do so IP interface brief they didn't get yet and likewise do so IP interface IP interface brief not yet there we go so both device uh, successfully get TCP IP setting from the DSCP server and we can also verify from DSCP server so IP DSCP binding in binding database we can see IP 1.1.1.2 and 1.1.1.3 are allocated to appropriate to these devices so this is the client identifier it is not a MAC address actually same thing we can verify on snooping switch so so IP DSCP snooping binding on snooping binding it also going to maintain those TCP IP settings or I should say the lease information so this is the MAC address of device this is the IP address which allocated this is the lease time and this is the interface along with the VLAN we can also read the limit so suppose if someone looking to get uh, to get assign all TCP IP addresses from the DSCP server sending message over and over and over and over to get all TCP IP settings we can uh, limit that particular interface you can request for once twice or thrice so this thing we can configure on trusted interface as well as untrusted interface 
So let's say now I'm going to configure this thing on interface F0 slash 1. So configure terminal interface F0 slash 1 IP DSCP snooping and there is a command which is limit. So limit rate and then after we can define how many packets are allowed for DSCP request or to get TCP IP settings. So in my case, I'm going to allow only one address. But we know we have one, two, three devices connected to the same link. So let's see the result. So first I would like to configure these switches to get TCP IP from the DSCP server. So VLAN one, IP address, gate from the DSCP server and make sure interface is up. Configure terminal interface VLAN 1, IP address gate from the DSCP server, no shutdown. Same thing going to be happen on this, inter uh, this switch. So IP interface, excuse me, interface VLAN number 1, IP address gate from the DSCP and no shutdown. The next thing which we are going to do enable that, uh, that interface. So since we have already read the limit uh, or we have configured this interface to allow only two, excuse me, one uh, request for gate TCP IP setting. So let's say what going to be or what is the end result. So make the interface up and wait a sec till it assign TCP IP setting. We are supposed to see this interface going to send on error disabled mode because we have assigned the limit on that particular interface and since it going to generate 1, 2 and 3 packets to get DSCP IP, uh, to get TCP IP settings from the DSCP. So that's why the interface should goes in error disabled mode. So do so, excuse me. Yes, as we can see, DSCP snooping error disabled. We can also verify using command so interface status which is error disabled. So interface F0 slash 1 status is error disabled. The reason is DSCP rate limit. We can configure this thing on trusted port as well as untrusted port. So what happen if same feature we going to configure on trusted interface? Same thing going to be this interface going to be down if it send a more than a request which we have configured. Uh, likewise, we can also go through the rest of configuration like we can configure IP DSCP snooping. We need to enable it globally. Then we need to specify on which VLAN it going to be work. Likewise, no IP DSCP snooping information option. It also need to execute globally. Then select that particular interface, which is going to work as a trusted port. We can limit the traffic of DSCP and for verification, we can execute this command. So IP DSCP snooping binding database as well as statistics. So this is all uh, this is all about in this video. So far we have discussed what is a DSCP snooping and why we require. So basically it is a security feature where we are going to limit the DSCP uh, excuse me, we're going to block the DSCP snooping using DS, uh, DSCP snooping feature of switches.